Isabel and I are so pleased to have uh, Lumpur Pasano joining us today for uh, this interview. And I'll just uh, read a quick biography of Lumpur and then we'll jump into questions. Um, so Lumpur Pasano was born in Manitoba, Canada in 1949. Um, and he is the most senior Western disciple of Venerable Cha in the United States. Um, after finishing his studies at the University of Winnipeg, Lumpur traveled to Asia through Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, to India, Nepal, and finally Thailand, where he traveled to Wat Blang Vipassana Meditation Monastery in Chiang Mai. After a month-long silent retreat, Lumpur took what he thought would be a temporary ordination in January of 1974 at the age of 24. So that temporary ordination grew in length and profundity uh, when Lumpur traveled with his teacher uh, to meet Lumpur Cha with whom he asked to stay and train. Being one of the early residents of Wat Ba Nanachat, the International Forest Monastery in Ubon, Thailand, Lumpur Pasong became its abbot in his ninth year as a monk. During his incumbency there, Wat Ba Nanachat developed considerably, both in physical size and reputation. Spending about 24 years living in Thailand, Lumpur Pasno became a well-known and highly respected monk and Dhamma teacher. He moved to California on New Year's Eve of 1997 to share the abbotship of Abhaigiri with Ajahn Amaro. In 2010, Ajahn Amaro uh, moved to Amaravati, leaving Lumpur Pasano to serve as sole abbot of Abhaigiri for the next eight years. In the spring of 2018, Lumpur Pasano stepped back from the role of abbot, leaving the monastery for a year-long retreat abroad, and has since returned from his sabbatical and serving as the anchor of wisdom and guidance for the Abhaigiri community. Uh, Lumpur Pasano is the author of many books, um, of which you can find at the Abhayagiri website. Um, those include The Island, which is a great anthology of the Buddhist teachings on Nibbana, and among many other books. And Lumpur Pasano is also uh, my preceptor, so I owe my monastic life to Lumpur Pasano. So Lumpur, thank you so much for agreeing to, to meet with us. Yeah. Um, so in preparing for this, um, I realized that I've got about about 84,000 uh, questions. So this, we might have to uh, do another series. The list really is long. I'm looking at it's it. It's a long <laughs> list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I mean, it could end up uh, you know, like a, one of these en endless television series. <laughs> <laughs> we would love that, Lumpur. We would love it. Yeah, multiple series. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Um, I just wanted, I thought it would be good to start off with um, your teachings on gratitude. I've found that that's something um, which uh, I won't say it's unique, but I, I did find it um, quite profound coming to meet you and hearing you teach explicitly on the quality of gratitude and just living, living gratitude, your gratitude for Lumpur, uh, Lumpur Cha, and um, yeah, just how gratitude is a part of Dhamma practice. And I was wondering if you could speak to, um, yeah, people who don't yet see the value of gratitude in a Buddhist practice and, you know, see the value in actually finding fault and seeing faults and being able to, you know, make these kind of discernments and not really paying so much attention to gratitude um, on the opposite end of that, that spectrum of looking out at the world. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's when you look out at the world, um, you know, you're, you're making choices and, and what you, you have to sort of make a, make a choice, you know, do I want, do I want to suffer more or suffer less? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just, there's a, uh, if you look at it that clearly, it's sort of like, uh, it, it's like a no brainer. Um, why would I want to fill my mind and my heart with more, more criticism, more negativity, uh, more competition, more comparing, um, uh, more, more gaining, more achieving, because that's, that's what, what the world runs on. And, and that's, uh, it hasn't really worked for how many millennia now. Uh, so <clears throat> it's worth uh, turning attention to something that 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 actually feels better, uh, and so that gr looking in through the lens of gratitude, and you realize that that as a <clears throat> uh, 
uh, uh, any existence. Um, yeah, we're not, we are not autonomous. <laughs> we're not autonomous packages of meat. I mean, it's, just, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> you know, we actually, uh, our, our senses uh, uh, and our heart are in connection with the world around us and we interact and we have to interact uh, so that, that uh, you know, trying to prop up the, <clears throat> the sense of uh, 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 an autonomous individual and personality is just really painful and, and tiring. <clears throat> so to be able to recognize that we are intrinsically uh, and, and inevitably bound to the world around us, just through the senses and through the, our feelings and perceptions and emotions and uh, memories. And so that to, to be able to <clears throat> uh, turn to a quality that helps to uh, brighten the heart and, and to, to illuminate the mind so we can see clearly and, 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 and feel uh, feel better, feel good. Um, then we can then we can start interacting with the world and with those interdependencies from a place of well-being and generosity and giving. Because you realize that with gratitude, you know, we receive a lot, uh, and to be able to be, have that quality of gratitude and then to uh, replenish that pool of well-being and goodness um, and being being a part of that rather than you know what can I get what can I achieve what can I what can I keep for myself and it's so pathetic uh, so it's uh, it you know and, and it hurts um, and and and, and uh, you know and it's not you know and it's not looking at things in a <clears throat> in a, uh, uh, you know, it's not like you're trying to gloss over the, the, uh, the, the, the realities of, um, yeah, the, the egregious nature of, of many, the, you know, many aspects of the human condition and, and human beings. But um, it's, you know, what do we, what do we want to act from? And it's really important to realize you have that agency uh, and you can you can can rely on that and that's that builds the foundation for increased um, wisdom discernment and and uh, and living from a place of, of compassion <clears throat> thank you long for in terms of you know keeping that pool of gratitude filled um, I feel like the people's interaction often with news and the news cycle is a sort of continual drain on that pool. Um, how would you advise, you know, people working with uh, news, news intake and current events in such a way that, you know, they can protect their practice um, and, you know, move from that place of gratitude um, well, tur turn off the news feeds. Uh, it's just, there's actually, that's, it's not news. I mean, it's, this is all old stuff, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, <clears throat> you know, what would be really news if, you know, people were actually kind and considerate and generous, that'd be real news. <laughs> So, again, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know, it, it, it's just at least a limit. Uh, but, you know, because, uh, you know, most people can't go cold, cold, cold turkey. Uh, but, uh, you know, to really, really limit the, 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 uh, the attention that one pays to the news and also to social media, I, I really don't. I don't see the benefit in it at all. Uh, and, you know, I hope that doesn't sound like a, you know, like a, 
uh, you know, an, an old Luddite who, you know, was, you know, just grumbling and complaining about this, this you know, modern, modern technology. Because it, it, the reality is we're, we're actually meeting using the technology <clears throat> and, and say, <clears throat> at a Bayagiri, I mean, we, 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 we use the technology to broadcast our uh, pujas on Saturdays and the Lunar Observance Days and our Dhamma talks. And, and uh, you know, so it's the, the technology is, is, is really useful, but it's what, what it, how do you use it so that it is actually of benefit rather than, than something that, that, that really just sucks your energy and and such your well-being uh, out and and uh, you know just you know leaves you kind of empty. Yeah, Lumpur, this is quite fascinating. I mean, you became an abbot in 1952. <clears throat> That's the year I was born, and I mean, you you've like started, um, you know, you started well. You continued work at Wat Banarachat, the international monastery, but basically helped to start uh, Wat Pujam Gam, Wat Daudam. What a Bayagiri. And these are places which I feel like find a really good balance, um, you know, between the traditionalism, you know, of Theravada Buddhism, where, you know, the teachings of the, the elders. But, you know, a Bayagiri is not a Luddite place, you know. I mean, as you said, you know, we're connect, you know, a Bayagiri is connected um, yeah. you know, to the internet and to the world. You're connected, you know, to the internet and to the world to some extent. But do you have any advice about how to how to balance that? The the tradition and and being simple, living simply, without, but also, yeah, acknowledging the that you know we are interrelated and you know this is a modern world and we're in a modern context. Well, yeah, we are in a modern world. We're in a modern context, but you know I don't think human nature has changed all that much. Um, you know, twenty five hundred years we're still suffering, so that that the the teachings of the Buddha are 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 completely relevant. Uh, today and and you know it's certainly one of the things that I appreciate <clears throat> about the uh, the uh, of course the Buddhist teaching but also the the, the Theravada uh, and particularly the say like the Thai forest tradition uh, is the one there's a connection to nature and that's really important um, <clears throat> it's not a and there is, a, 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 and it's something that, that is sometimes not really well understood <clears throat> in the uh, in the West uh, is how closely connected the monasteries are in, say, like in, in, in the Thai forest tradition and Thai Theravada in general with the society around it. Uh, they're just such a direct. So you you're 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 you really. I mean, one of the reasons is because of the way that the Buddha set things up. Um, you can't you can't really go for more than a day comfortably without having some contact with with the lay community and the lay society. You know, unless you want to fast. <laughs> And uh, most of us don't want to fast. <laughs> you know, we, I mean, I said, uh, I like to eat. So, <laughs> but but that, that reliance on 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 alms food is 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 a uh, creates a a, a a very direct um, link to the, the to the world of the uh, around us and. And its concerns and its difficulties, uh, and uh, and and gives an opportunity to respond in a, you know, hopefully, in a you know, in a wise and compassionate way. <clears throat> so then, uh, and then the the, the teachings uh, of the the Buddha that are you know preserved in the Pali Canon. I mean, the Pali Canon is very extensive, but uh, it has some basic 
themes that are not uh, uh, they're they're not really uh, uh, it's not complicated it's not it's not overly complicated or over philosophical philosophized about <clears throat> so four noble truths back to experience uh, dependent origination then the reality that that everything is built on a, a, a web of causes and conditions and to be able to uh, understand that nature of karma uh, whatever actions Whatever action I will do, for good or for ill, I, of that I will be the heir. Um, <clears throat> one has to reflect on that, uh, as well as the the uh, you know the on a certain level the mundane uh, aspects that you keep reviewing over and over again. Yeah, I'm of I'm of the nature to age. I have not gone beyond aging. Uh, I'm of the nature to sicken. I'm not gone beyond. I'm of the nature to die. I'm not gone beyond dying. You can come up with intelligent, coherent, brilliant philosophies, but you're still going to get old and sick and die. <laughs> and if you don't figure that out, um, you know, you're, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a shame. 